when you wake up in the morning and look in the mirror, you probably think of yourself as an individual. And in many ways you are, but you're actually home to a vast number of other organisms. And the microbiome I'm going to talk about is the gut microbiome. Um, in adults, this can weigh up to a kilogram, which is quite a lot of microbiota, really. Um, if it's some people, it's actually bigger than their brains. And before you start worrying about how you're going to get rid of this unwanted stuff, you should understand that it is really quite important. Um, the example I would use is these microorganisms, they're not passengers in your gut, they're actually crew, and you get a lot of benefit from having them. So in fact, you're, you're more like a rainforest. You have a complex ecology that starts in your mouth and works all the way down to the GI tract with a huge concentration of bacteria in your colon. And they're all doing useful stuff for you, or at least most of them are. So the microbiota in your gut, which you inherit or begin to inherit from your mother at birth, um, they help to train your immune system. They help the development of your gut. They help you to digest your food. Um, they help to keep out unwanted bacteria like C. difficile. And nobody wants a great deal of C. difficile in their guts. The other bacteria try and the bacteria from your microbiome try and keep them out. Um, as a baby, you have different microbiota in your gut than as an adult. And as I say, that microbiota is quite important in helping you to digest your mother's milk. So these really are helpful creatures, and um, an awareness of that is quite important. Uh, again, if you think about uh, the number of genes that human beings have, about 20 to 30,000, the number keeps changing, all seems to be going down, which seems to worry people because they think they should be more impressive than that. You have about 10 trillion cells in your body. Well, the microbiome is maybe 100 trillion cells. They each have a genome. So actually, you're probably only about 10% human if you think about their genomic contribution to your well-being. They also produce trace things like uh, vitamins. They're responsible for about well, a significant amount of calorific recovery from fermentation in your lower bowel but things like proteins or um, complex polysaccharides that are simply not digested by your own enzymes. So without this gut microbiota, you'd be a very different and less interesting individual and quite unhealthy too. One of the things that the microbiome also does is it modulates the effects of certain drugs. So there are some drugs where metabolism and their efficacy is actually dependent on enzymes in the, in the gut microbiome converting the drug into its active form. So when you take these drugs, things like uh, sulfasalazine and similar drugs for uh, things like irritable bowel disease, the efficacy of the drug depends on there being microbiota in the gut that can, hydro that can reduce these molecules and convert them to the active form. So as an example of one of the things that uh, the microbiota do for you, um, if you drink coffee, uh, it contains something called caffeic acid, all right? so, which is a bit of a coincidence, really, if you think about it. As the caffeic acid goes down through your uh, guts, it's not particularly useful to you, but the gut microflora extract energy from it. And eventually they convert it into something which is absorbed into your liver, which your liver metabolizes a little bit and then excretes back into the lower, in, into the gut, where more bacteria do more things to that. And eventually you end up with a, uh, a molecule called benzoic acid, which your liver um, conjugates with a, an amino acid called a glycine and that gets excreted in the urine. So one of the things that you do for your gut microbiota is you act as a waste disposal system for them which, you know, is again a, a, another reason for perhaps not being too pompous about being pinnacle of life. Your microbiome is quite important to you. One of the things, therefore, we should be thinking very carefully about is looking after the microbiome. Now, if you take large doses of antibiotics, they will potentially kill species of your gut, species, that you, species of bacteria in your gut that you actually want to keep. So we're conducting a huge experiment on the microbiome, which we didn't even know we were, we were taking on. 
So one of the one of the things that the microbiome the microbiome does for you by fermenting these things that would otherwise be waste products is to reduce things like short chain fatty acids. So that provides you firstly with a significant calorific recovery. You get more from your food than you would have done otherwise. So they're paying, if you like, for, for being in your gut. And secondly, these short chain fatty acids seem to have beneficial effects in probably preventing or slowing down the development of bowel cancer. You're in a symbiotic relationship with your gut microflora. Um, and that's essentially a very good thing. Now, occasionally, this symbiotic relationship is less useful than it might be. So there are a range of drugs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, which are excreted in the bile as glucuronides. So if this is ibuprofen or diclofenac, it has a carboxylic acid moiety on it. And your body sticks on a glucuronic acid, and that enables it to be easily excreted in the bile. The problem is, when it's excreted in the bile and ends up in the colon, there's a whole range of bacteria there who don't see the drug, but they do see the glucuronic acid. So they have enzymes that are specifically designed to remove the glucuronic acid, which they then use as fuel, liberating the diclofenac. Now, diclofenac itself is a gut toxin. So as the glucuronide, it's perfectly safe because it's inactivated, but the gut microflora have by accident turned it into a bomb. So you get ulceration. Um, if, you're, if you have toxic doses. Now, some scientists in the US, uh, one whose name I always manage to get wrong, but I probably pronounce his red Nebo, spotted this and came up with a really brilliant idea of blocking the bacterial enzyme. Now, humans also have glucuronidases as well, but they're different structure to the bacterial ones. So he was able to make something which specifically blocked the hydrolysis by the bacterial enzyme whilst leaving the human one unaffected and that has the ability to stop this sort of problem. Now, you may think that this is fairly trivial, but there are anti-cancer drugs that are also excreted in the bile as glucuronides. They are very cytotoxic, but not as glucuronides. When the gut bacteria take the glucuronide off, they then cause dose-limiting damage to the lower bowel, including diarrhea and things like that, which, I mean, if you've got cancer, it's bad enough to have dose-limiting uh, problems like this is much worse. The potential is that by using these inhibitors, this toxicity can be eliminated, or at least closely reduced, allowing people to get the benefit of the drug without the side effect. So a better understanding of how we interact with our gut microflora and what they do is really quite important. One of the problems, though, is that it's only because of recent um, advances in molecular biology that we've been able to realize how diverse and complex the microbiome is. So we're talking about an ecology that contains at least a thousand species. And one of the questions you can ask is, can we improve the microbiome? But as we don't yet fully understand the, the ecology of the system, we don't know what to improve. So one of the things that you can consider is, you know, what is the best microbiome? What's the optimal microbiome? Should we be re-engineering the microbiome? The problem is that we don't yet really understand its full capabilities. There are at least a thousand species of bacteria in the gut. So if you start deciding that some are good and bad and introducing others, you could get a similar sort of disastrous effect on the ecology as introducing rabbits to Australia, which probably seemed like a good idea at the time, but it's one of those things that we would reverse if we possibly could. So we are at the very early stages of understanding the microbiome and what's going on in it. Very early stages really of understanding how the microbiome interacts with drugs. I mean, we know that at least 30 or 40 drugs have an interrelationship with effects from the microbiome on them. Uh, in terms of metabolism or disposition. There may be many others where we haven't yet established that. So there's a, you know, it's a fantastic opportunity for science to delve into something completely unexplored, and it's entirely within your own stomach, which I think is wonderful. Mm -hmm.